Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, yes, this week was a heck of a lot of fun. Back up working in the wheelhouse aboard MV Poem and doing something that I've been looking forward to for so long. I built the three cabinets up in um, above the bulkhead there and it went so well. Anyway, let's jump back in time and you can see if you think it went as well as I think it went. <laughs> and welcome back to MV Poem. I must say, um, it's been so nice to have the wheelhouse basically as my living quarters. It's just so much tidier and cleaner up here. Anyway, um, it would be very tempting to carry on with the um, all the sort of beautification, the mahogany and stuff for the benches, but it's just not practical right now because I have to keep moving on things that actually advance functionality. And that is basically this cabinetry here. And with that, there's a lot that it ties into, including a um, little valence up here for some strip lighting, both up and down and some wiring in there. Anyway, so this is basically, if you've seen the 3D visualization, there are three cabinets up here. I showed all three as glass in the visualization. I think probably only the center one will have a glass door. Um, but how they all interrelate to all of this is a bit complicated and you might have heard me say that trying to restore um, certain parts of this bulkhead is just more work um, than is really feasible so I am going to veneer the backs uh, inside of the cabinets uh, with some Sapelli mahogany plywood. Uh, I do have to tidy up this panel here because it's outside and I need to do something with the big hole that is now covered up with all that tape in an effort to stay warm in here. Okay, here I am at the uh, upper end of this same hole and I think I'm going to have to confidently say this is not something I can deal with in the near term. The um, cabin top is full three quarter inch, actually a little more, um, tongue and groove uh, V joint and to be able to patch that reasonably neatly reasonably quickly is just not in the cards. So that's a project for another time. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna have to make some sort of patch for this tidy, cut this back a bit. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Okay, so it begins with cleaning up this section of what I'll call here the bulkhead shelf. Um, pretty straightforward, some heat gun, some little bit of sanding. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, Okay, first little faux back panel. I'm intentionally putting the grain vertically so that I'm not, ah, very nice, um, simulating the horizontal grain of the bulkhead, but in fact, creating the vertical grain of the full cabinet that is here. Anyway, so that, that actually is gonna be just fine. Little trick, when you're putting something in that you don't know how you're gonna get off again, wrap a piece of tape way around the back so you can pull it out again without uh, getting too frustrated. I suppose I could have poked this one out from the outside. Anyway, so this is um, Sapelli, good one side Sapelli mahogany uh, with a B back. And because it's gonna be against an outside bulkhead and not much ventilation, I am going to seal the back of this. <laughs> Unlike most of the wood that I talk about. Um, the truth is the front is not going to be very, very well sealed. It'll, it's only gonna be, um, uh, hand rubbed poly uh, which is not completely opaque to moisture so any moisture that does get into this will be able to breathe back out the front uh, anyway the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stain these with my gel stain now this brings up a very good point a few people have asked me Peter well is gel stain going to replace tongue oil for you and absolutely not uh, it's a wonderful product and it does a certain thing it also is very handy with a problem I've been having Tongue oil on real solid uh, Sapelli mahogany absolutely gets the depth of color that I'm looking for. Absolutely love it. Not rocking that boat. However, 
I've had difficulty getting tongue oil to bring uh, thin veneered plywood to the same tone as the tongue oil has. However, <laughs> just a light rubbing of that gel stain seems to bring it exactly in line. And I've done a couple of little test pieces. Um, well, most notably, actually, I apologize. I never mentioned it. Um, the actual bulkhead is has now been stained uh, to match um, the uh, the oiled uh, solid mahogany and it worked out really really well okay so I'm gonna make up a few more of these and uh, this is actually I'm feeling pretty good about this okay how's this one nice very nice I will say it's a few trips back and forth to the sander I'll show you okay first a rough rectangle um, it is this gap is tapered it's larger at the top than the bottom so so I have to take a little off the bottom uh, yep and then in terms of the top it's just a bit of a camber and uh, I just take it out to the belt sander let's have a look all right first off this bottom left corner We'll start to put some camber in it. And a trough it. And how does it feel now? Oh, fine at the bottom. Very nice. What can you ask for? Beauty! Before I start building any cabinets here, I really should finish this up and get them sanded and tidied up and bunged. So we'll just get that done. A few people pointed out to me that maybe this corner could get completely rounded off, sort of a bullnose all the way around the edge. And I suppose that might be possible uh, considering its proximity to the companionway here. However, it hasn't bothered me too much. So as I'm going to stain this, um, it's a good opportunity to stain both this and the three panels that I just made for the back here. Just giving this a bit of a stir. I'm not sure that's required, but I figured there's no harm. And here's the first panel stained. Uh, I think it's going to be just just great uh, by the time I get a little oil on that as well that'll have a really really nice look to it all right all right all right all right Here's a nice piece of uh, three-quarter inch sapelli, which will make all the rail and style solid mahogany. And then uh, the side panels will be mahogany ply and the front and the doors will either be glass or more mahogany ply. Um, I'm trying to break it up into a module of reasonable sizes to work with because I'm going to have to cut a lot of uh, dados. Um, and that turns into be roughly about 20 inches. So let's... Yeah, inch and a half. And now I use a table saw to rip a data out. I think I've mentioned several times that I don't actually have a rotor bit that's the metric size for my metric plywood. So I have to do this with the uh, uh, table saw, no harm. And by moving the fence over slightly and ripping in both directions, I widen the curve. Ah. 
Okay, so here are the components for the starboard, starboard cabinet minus the door. So basically we have um, two um, styles and two rails uh, for the little side panel. The reason the top one is taller is because it's going to have a trim piece that attaches to it and it needs something to bite to because I want to expose the same inch and a half top and bottom. So we need to make a panel to go in there. So basically the front frame is also taller at the top quite a bit and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, now this is the frame for the door the door will open up out of that. Now, the top is extra tall here because of course the same half inch applies to this uh, because there'll be a trim piece across there, but there'll also be a curve cut into this uh, because of the curve of the shape of the, um, the cabin top and the beam there. So the uh, actual door frame uh, will be curved and the door when it sits in here will also be curved. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And here's our panel. Uh, let's see how well that fits. Very nice. This is not very sophisticated joinery. You'll notice that the um, dados run right out the end. Uh, and I'm not putting any splines in there. I'm just going to actually hold this all together with screws in the end. Uh, because this particular panel, you'll never even see those screws. How simple could that be? I will put a daub of glue in there just to pretend I'm a carpenter. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to take this edge off. Little glue there. Little glue there. No problem. Slide that over onto there. Square this up. Pull it square and I'm going to use my uh, crate clamps just to hold this connection nice and flat while I drill it out. And in goes the screw. Swing this end for end, on with the Craig clamp. And you can see, starting to make some pretty good looking joints. Let's do the other side. And there we have a ready to go, pretty nice panel. Just gonna need a little sanding when that uh, dries up. Love it. And now for the face frame, a little more complicated because I have to cut uh, that curve in here to match the beam. So let me go inside and scribe that. And there we go. I'm not sure you can see my scribe there. Uh, now, if only I had a bandsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oak. That feels pretty good. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna balance that up on that one. Beauty. And there we have it, a nicely, very simply made little door frame. And the door will be made exactly the same way. Now, of course, um, some of these bungs will be visible, so whole uh, screws will be visible, so I'll just put a bung and sand them off.
So now, how am I going to attach this to the boat? Well, with pocket screws, of course. How on earth did you not imagine that? The only problem is a pocket screw normally draw, drills a much longer pocket than I want. In other words, it would emerge right here out of the edge of the, um, of the style. And uh, I don't want that. So what I can do, I can actually hack the um, Craig pocket screw tool a little bit by making it loose, rocking it over, holding it very, 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 very carefully, and that will increase the angle dramatically and give me that short pocket. The only problem I'm having is that my Craig pocket drill is getting a bit dull, a little bit of a feathery edge on it there, but nothing a uh, few minutes with an old I can't tidy up. There we go. The most important thing with pocket screws is putting them in the right place. They're really hard to conceal once you've already put them in the wrong place. The nose, the third hand. Okay. Now this is the outer edge, so this gets the bungs. All right, well, while I'm waiting for this to cure enough that I can sand it, let's start thinking about making the door. So it basically has two styles and two rails. Um, the bottom rail is the same inch and a half. The top rail I have to make extra thick because it has to cope with those extra curves. Um, the uh, styles I've cut the length, the rails I have not yet. So I'll just sit this in here like this and mark that right there and cut both rails to that. And I'm just going to use the actual uh, door frame to trace out that top curve. Here we go. Now, to be fair, the top curve will be cut after the door is assembled. The bottom curve can't be. It has to be cut before I assemble the door. So I'm going to measure down an inch and a half which is the size of the rail. And I'm going to reposition this at that height and draw just on the rail. There we go. So now we have the shape of the top and the bottom. Easy peasy. Uh, but I have to cut the bottom one before I actually build the door. Okay, so with the top rail uh, cut on the inside, we can carry on with our standard uh, construction technique. Okay, make sure everything is nice and flush, and it is very nice, very nice, and let that set up for a little bit. Now, because this is a door that's going to sit in a frame, and I don't have a very flat work surface, and this is kind of a hack carpentry technique, I do want to make sure that they're both in the same plane. See how that's rocking just a little bit in that direction, and not in this direction? Let me try it this way. All right, so the door is slightly potato chipped, easily corrected, while the glue is setting.
There you go, very nice. I'm just gonna put something extremely heavy on here for the next few minutes while the glue starts to do its magic. Something extremely heavy. What do I have that's extremely heavy? Well, it's not extremely heavy, but it'll do the trick. All right, well, while the door is drying up, this end panel is gonna need a slight uh, notch around the beam up there. Um, I wanted it to run high so that I would have some material, as I mentioned, to fasten the little um, uh, cornice board that's gonna go on there. But I just need to scribe this or mark this or whatever you wanna call this uh, for that little notch. There. And in the other direction, I just hold it here. Then let's see if we can pretty these up a bit. Ah. And what we still need to do here is trim this top edge. Uh, so I'll fire it up in the table saw and uh, then we'll see what we can do with the sander. I'm really really pleased with the way this is all turning out. I'm just gonna start uh, bunging uh, these screws where they're visible and I'm kind of gonna sort of cheat on that um, as you may know uh, interior I don't use any glue for bungs and uh, rather than cut them off with the bung saw I'm just going to run the whole door through the table saw uh, which will do a couple of things. Of course it'll cut the bungs off but it'll also absolutely clean up this edge and uh, I can fine tune that so it fits into the frame just perfectly. Let's go. There we go, nice and smooth. Okay, more fine tuning the door fit. I'm gonna start with the bottom ever so slightly tight on this side. So we'll... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna leave that there for now. Swing it around and see what we think of the top. Not bad for the first go. Uh, a little tight right here on the door, a little tight right here on the frame. And that's 
looking pretty good. Okay, it's getting close, getting close, getting close. Whoop. There we go. Nice fit. Now, of course, that isn't the finished fit because, of course, I have to <laughs> create enough of a reveal that it will open and close. But at least now I know I can take an equal amount off all sides and that will open and close quite nicely. A moment on the belt sander and now it just drops straight in. Now there's yet another <laughs> bit of sanding to be done and that's just a slight easing on the edges here which will make the reveal look a little bit bigger. I sort of dread doing it but it's a required part of the process. Just a few strokes. There we go, and now just with that slightest, slightest easing on the edge, it just looks so nice. And this one, perfectly satisfied with that. All right, first step here is to put these panels up, all of which have received two coats of varnish on the back and the edges. This one, of course, is the least honorable of these, but it will do until I can do something better. You know, that doesn't look half bad. Okay, let's put some cabinets on. Something I've not been looking forward to doing, but I believe it's inevitable, is rounding off these two corners. As much as I'm very happy with the way they look, I have to acknowledge that they are a bit, uh, kind of in the companion way. So um, I'm going to ease those off into a bull nose all the way around. I think in, once it's done and I'm over it, I'll be perfectly happy with it. Now these should be able to come back out again and I can take that out and sand that, ease it and bung it. Of course you all knew what was coming next. Yes, yes, yes. It is insanely windy. I can't believe um, how I'm getting buffeted in here. Well, and there you go. Well, I can tell you this is the moment I've been waiting for all week. Absolutely thrilled. Just thrilled. Um, to me, this style of cabinet is much more keep in keeping with the boat. I just, oh my gosh. Now there's lots to be done still, of course, hinges, latches, shelves, glass. I've decided to put glass in all three cabinets actually. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that. In fact, at some point I would love to put lighted glass into these cabinets, but uh, well, <laughs> time will tell. Anyway, you know, and the way it worked out with this detail as well too, very, very happy with that. In fact, I've decided not to put any sort of shelf uh, under here, this will just get the same bead that the other side gets. Um, anyway, very, 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 very pleased. Hooey! Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this week from the wheelhouse of Envy Jordy in beautiful downtown Victoria. It j just to compare that with a regular can of beer. <laughs> Um, absolutely stunned by this. Mike and Leslie uh, sent me a, f a couple of these out from New Brunswick. It's from St. Andrew's Brewing in, uh, in uh, New Brunswick, Canada. And this is their uh, Wharf Bound. It's a hazy apparently, and I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm half tempted to drink it from the can, uh, but no, I, I don't think I'll do that. Anyway, let's, let's see what we think of uh, Wharf Bound Hazy IPA from St. Andrew's Brewing. My God, that's a can. I thought only Australians drank out of cans of that magnitude. 
What a great week. What a fantastic week. Um, I'm not sure the style and the type and certainly the type of cabinetry because it's a bit hack suits all of you, but it suits me. Um, it's quick, dirty, looks okay, and is quite effective. Um, so I'm super thrilled with the um, cabinetry that I was able to get done this week. All right, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh, hazy, hazy. Oh, that is magnificent, and I have lots of it. Okay, let's 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 jump right in. Anyway, thank you ever so much, um, Mike and Leslie, for that. That's delicious. Okay, um, last midweek's winner of a Travels with Jordy uh, T-shirt is Brian Starr. Brian Starr, get a hold of me, and we'll make sure you get your Travels with Jordy T-shirt. Congratulations. And further, great gratitude out in the world of Patreon. Three more new Patreons, which is which is just so wonderful. Peter Finch, thank you. Hans Weber, thank you. And uh, Steven Anderson, thank you all and cheers to you for coming aboard. I'm so very, very grateful. Wow. <laughs> it's awesome. If you have a chance, while you're in New Brunswick, to check out the um, St. Andrews Brewery. I know that I will be there next time I'm there. Okay, we can wrap this up with a word of the week. And I'm just so enthusiastic. I've had so much fun this last week. I don't think I've ever used the word fun. So you know what to do with it. If you'd like to win a Travels with Jordy t-shirt, simply use the word fun in a comment down below and I'll pick it random over the next week's worth of comments. And if I pick you, you'll want a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Isn't that fun?